But fundamentally, I want to get a sense of, is there a problem with this patient's parathyroid hormone, which is a hormone that regulates our blood calcium levels, meaning is he inappropriately producing too much parathyroid hormone and that's making his calcium levels go up? Or is this calcium high despite having normal parathyroid uh, kind of function? And so getting a PTH level is the next step here to break that down. My guess is that his PTH level is going to be appropriately suppressed. It's not going to be very high in this situation. I'm sure you'll let me know here in a little bit. And so then other causes, if it is in fact what we'll call PTH independent, meaning his calcium is high for some other reason, then other questions would start to arise. For example, does this patient have vitamin D problems like vitamin D toxicity? Is he taking too much vitamin D supplementation or does he have medical conditions that can lead to excessive activation of vitamin D? There's a whole bunch of those that, again, uh, I could nerd out on, but I will only bring up if they become relevant in a little bit. And then lastly, is he taking some form of calcium supplementation? So for example, uh, was this patient taking a whole bunch of NSAIDs, gave himself a stomach ulcer and had bad esophagitis and reflux, and then started taking boatloads of Tums to try to relieve those types of symptoms. And Tums are calcium carbonate, and you can certainly make yourself hypercalcemic from that. And then what happens when you have high blood calcium levels, it can lead to essentially diabetes insipidus uh, and, and what's called nephrocalcinosis. So you can end up peeing out tons and tons and tons of dilute urine because the high calcium impairs your kidney's ability to concentrate urine. And so then he has to drink a bunch of water to keep up. 